Welcome to the Dr. Izzy's Medical Podcast Channel. Basal Cell Carcinoma Basal Cell Carcinoma, BCC, also known as basal cell cancer, is the most common type of skin cancer. It often appears as a painless raised area of skin, which may be shiny with small blood vessels running over it. It may also present as a raised area with ulceration. Basal cell cancer grows slowly and can damage the tissue around it, but it is unlikely to spread to distant areas or result in death. Risk factors include exposure to ultraviolet light, having lighter skin, radiation therapy, long-term exposure to arsenic and poor immune system function. Exposure to UV light during childhood is particularly harmful. Tanning beds have become another common source of ultraviolet radiation. Diagnosis often depends on skin examination, confirmed by tissue biopsy. It remains unclear whether sunscreen affects the risk of basal cell cancer. Treatment is typically by surgical removal. This can be by simple excision if the cancer is small, otherwise, most surgery is generally recommended. Other options include electrodesiccation and curatage, cryosurgery, topical chemotherapy, photodynamic therapy, laser surgery or the use of amiquimod, a topical immune-activating medication. In the rare cases in which distant spread has occurred, chemotherapy or targeted therapy may be used. Signs and Symptoms Individuals with a basal cell carcinoma typically present with a shiny, pearly skin nodule. However, superficial basal cell cancer can present as a red patch similar to eczema. Infiltrative or morpheiform basal cell cancers can present as a skin thickening or scar tissue, making diagnosis difficult without using tactile sensation and a skin biopsy. It is often difficult to visually distinguish basal cell cancer from acne scar, actinic elastosis, and recent cryodestruction inflammation. Cause the majority of basal cell carcinomas occur on sun-exposed areas of the body. Pathophysiology. Basal cell carcinomas are currently considered to have origin from the folliculosebaceous apocrine germ, also known as trichoblast. The differential diagnosis with trichoblastic carcinoma, a rare malignant form of trichoblastoma, can be challenging. Alternatively, one argument is that basal cell carcinoma is trichoblastic carcinoma. Overexposure to sun leads to the formation of thymine dimers, a form of DNA damage. While DNA repair removes most UV-induced damage, not all crosslinks are excised. There is, therefore, cumulative DNA damage leading to mutations. Apart from the mutagenesis, overexposure to sunlight depresses the local immune system, possibly decreasing immune surveillance for new tumor cells. Basal cell carcinomas can often come in association with other lesions of the skin, such as actinic keratosis, seborrheic keratosis, squamous cell carcinoma. In a small proportion of cases, basal cell carcinoma also develops as a result of basal cell nevus syndrome, or Gorlin syndrome, which is also characterized by keratocystic odontogenic tumors of the jaw, palmar or pits, calcification of the falx cerebri, in the center line of the brain, and rib abnormalities. The cause of this syndrome is a mutation in the PTCH1 tumor suppressor gene located in chromosome 9q22.3, which inhibits the hedgehog signaling pathway. A mutation in the SMO gene, which is also on the hedgehog pathway, also causes basal cell carcinoma. Diagnosis. To diagnose basal cell carcinomas, a skin biopsy is performed for histopathologic analysis. The most common method is a shave biopsy under local anesthesia. Most nodular basal cell cancers can be diagnosed clinically, however, other variants can be very difficult to distinguish from benign lesions such as intradermal nevus, sebaceomas, fibrous papules, pearly acne scars, and hypertrophic scarring. Exfoliative cytology methods have high sensitivity and specificity for confirming the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma when clinical suspicion is high but unclear usefulness otherwise. Characteristics Basal cell carcinoma cells appear similar to epidermal basal cells, and are usually well differentiated. In uncertain cases, immunohistochemistry using BREP4 can be used, having a high sensitivity and specificity in detecting only BCC cells. Main classes. Basal cell carcinoma can broadly be divided into three groups, based on the growth patterns. Superficial basal cell carcinoma, formerly referred to in situ basal cell carcinoma, is characterized by a superficial proliferation of neoplastic basal cells. This tumor is generally responsive to topic chemotherapy, such as amiquimod, or fluorouracil. Infiltrative basal cell carcinoma, which also encompasses morpheiform and micronodular basal cell cancer, is more difficult to treat with conservative methods, given its tendency to penetrate into deeper layers of the skin. Nodular basal cell carcinoma includes most of the remaining categories of basal cell cancer. 
it is not unusual to encounter heterogeneous morphologic features within the same tumor. Nodular basal cell carcinoma. Nodular basal cell carcinoma, also known as classic basal cell carcinoma, accounts for 50% of all BCC. It most commonly occurs on the sun-exposed areas of the head and neck. Histopathology shows aggregates of basaloid cells with well-defined borders, showing a peripheral palisading of cells in one or more typical clefts. Such clefts are caused by shrinkage of mucin during tissue fixation and staining. Central necrosis with eosinophilic, granular features may be also present, as well as mucin. The heavy aggregates of mucin determine a cystic structure. Calcification may be also present, especially in long-standing lesions. Mitotic activity is usually not so evident, but a high mitotic rate may be present in more aggressive lesions. Adenoidal BCC can be classified as a variant of NBCC, characterized by basaloid cells with a reticulated configuration extending into the dermis. Other subtypes. Other more specific subtypes of basal cell carcinoma include. They are. Cystic basal cell carcinoma. Morpheiform basal cell carcinoma, also known as cicatricial basal cell carcinoma, and morpheic basal cell carcinoma. Infiltrative basal cell carcinoma. Micronodular basal cell carcinoma. Superficial basal cell carcinoma, also known as superficial multicentric basal cell carcinoma. Pigmented basal cell carcinoma exhibits increased melanization. Rodent ulcer, also known as a Jacobs ulcer. Fibroepithelioma of pincus. Polypoid basal cell carcinoma. Poor-like basal cell carcinoma. Aberrant basal cell carcinoma. Aggressiveness patterns. There are mainly three patterns of aggressiveness, based mainly the cohesion of cancer cells. They are, low-level aggressive pattern. Moderately aggressive pattern. Highly aggressive pattern. Differential diagnoses. Diagnose 1. Hair follicles. Peripheral sections may look like nests, but do not display atypia, nuclei are smaller, and serial sections will reveal the rest of the hair follicle. Diagnose 2. Squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Squamous cell carcinoma of the skin is generally distinguishable by for example relatively more cytoplasm, horn cyst formation and absence of palisading and cleft formations. Yet, a high prevalence means a relatively high incidence of borderline cases, such as basal cell carcinoma with squamous cell metaplasia. Barep 4 staining helps in such cases, staining only basal cell carcinoma cells. Diagnose 3, trichoblastoma. Absence of cleft, rudimentary hair germs, papillary mesenchymal bodies. Diagnose 4, adenoid cystic carcinoma. Lack of basaloid cells disposed in peripheral palisades, adenoid cystic lesion without connection to the epidermis, absence of artifactual clefts. Diagnose 5, microcystic adnexal carcinoma. Bland keratinocytes, keratin cysts, ductal differentiation. Diagnose 6, trichoepithelioma. Rims of collagen bundles, calcification, follicular, sebaceous, and fundibular differentiation and cut artifacts. Diagnose 7, Merkel cell carcinoma. Cells arranged in a diffuse, trabecular and or nested pattern, involving also the subcutis. Prevention. Basal cell carcinoma is a common skin cancer and occurs mainly in fair-skinned patients with a family history of this cancer. Sunlight is a factor in about two-thirds of these cancers, therefore, doctors recommend sunscreens with at least SPF 30. However, a Cochrane review examining the effect of solar protection in preventing the development of basal cell carcinoma or cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma found that there was insufficient evidence to demonstrate whether sunscreen was effective for the prevention of either of these keratinocyte-derived cancers. The review did ultimately state that the certainty of these results was low, so future evidence could very well alter this conclusion. One-third occur in non-sun-exposed areas, thus, the pathogenesis is more complex than UV exposure as the cause. The use of a chemotherapeutic agent such as 5-fluorouracil or amiquimod can prevent the development of skin cancer. It is usually recommended to individuals with extensive sun damage, history of multiple skin cancers, or rudimentary forms of cancer, that is solar keratosis. It is often repeated every 2 to 3 years to further decrease the risk of skin cancer. Treatment of basal cell carcinoma. Standard surgical excision. Surgery to remove the basal cell carcinoma affected area and the surrounding skin is thought to be the most effective treatment. A disadvantage with standard surgical excision is a reported higher recurrence rate of basal cell cancers of the face, especially around the eyelids, nose, and facial structures. There is no clear approach, nor a clear research comparing the effectiveness of Mohs micrographic surgery versus surgical excision for BCC of the eye. 
For basal cell carcinoma excisions on the lower lip the wound can be covered with a keystone flap. A keystone flap is achieved by creating a flap below the defect and pulling it superiorly to cover the wound. This can be performed if there is enough skin laxity to cover the defect and adequate blood supply to the flap. Most surgery. For ill-defined or recurrent basal cell cancer on the face after previous surgery, special surgical margin controlled processing CC Piedma, complete circumferential peripheral and deep margin assessment using frozen section histology should be considered. Mohs surgery, or Mohs micrographic surgery, is an outpatient procedure, which was developed by Frederick E. Mohs in the 1940s, in which the tumor is surgically excised and then immediately examined under a microscope. It is a form of pathology processing called CC Piedma. The base and edges are microscopically examined to verify sufficient margins before the surgical repair of the site. If the margins are insufficient, more is removed from the patient until the margins are sufficient. It is also used for squamous cell carcinoma, however, the cure rate is not as high as Mohs surgery for basal cell carcinoma. The pathologist processing the frozen section specimen should cut multiple sections through the block to minimize the false negative error rate or one should simply process the tissue utilizing a method approximating the Mohs method during frozen section processing. Unfortunately, these methods are difficult when applied to frozen sections, and they are very tedious to process. When not utilizing frozen section, the surgeon might have to wait a week or more before informing the patient if more tumor is left, or if the surgical margin is too narrow. A second surgery must be performed to remove the residual or potential residual tumor once the surgeon informs the patient of the positive or narrow surgical margin on the surgical pathology report. Most standard excisions done in a plastic surgeon or dermatologist's office are sent to an outside laboratory for standard bread loafing method of processing. With this method, it is likely that less than 5% of the surgical margin is examined, as each slice of tissue is only 6 micrometers thick, about 3 to 4 serial slices are obtained per section and only about 3 to 4 sections are obtained per specimen. Cryosurgery. Cryosurgery is an old modality for the treatment of many skin cancers. When accurately utilized with a temperature probe and cryotherapy instruments, it can result in very good cure rate. Disadvantages include lack of margin control, tissue necrosis, over or under treatment of the tumor, and long recovery time. Overall, there are sufficient data to consider cryosurgery as a reasonable treatment for BCC. There are no good studies, However, comparing cryosurgery with other modalities, particularly with Mohs surgery, excision, or electrodesiccation and curatage so that no conclusion can be made whether cryosurgery is as efficacious as other methods. Also, there is no evidence on whether curating the lesions before cryosurgery affects the efficacy of treatment. Several textbooks are published on the therapy, and a few physicians still apply the treatment to selected patients. Electrodesiccation and curatage. Electrodesiccation and curatage is accomplished by using a round knife, or curette, to scrape away the soft cancer. The skin is then burned with an electric current. This further softens the skin, allowing for the knife to cut more deeply with the next layer of curatage. The cycle is repeated, with a safety margin of curatage of normal skin around the visible tumor. This cycle is repeated 3-5 to times, and the free skin margin treated is usually 4-6 to mm. Cure rate is very much user-dependent and depends also on the size and type of tumor. Infiltrative or morpheiform BCCs can be difficult to eradicate with EDC. Generally, this method is used on cosmetically unimportant areas like the trunk. Some physicians believe that it is acceptable to utilize EDC on the face of elderly patients over the age of 70. However, with increasing life expectancy, such an objective criterion cannot be supported. The cure rate can vary, depending on the aggressiveness of the EDC and the free margin treated. Some advocate curatage alone without electrodesiccation, and with the same cure rate. Chemotherapy Some superficial cancers respond to local therapy with 5-fluorouracil, a chemotherapy agent. One can expect a great deal of inflammation with this treatment. Chemotherapy often follows Mohs surgery to eliminate the residual superficial basal cell carcinoma after the invasive portion is removed. 5-fluorouracil has received FDA approval. Removing the residual superficial tumor with surgery alone can result in large and difficult to repair surgical defects. One often waits a month or more after surgery before starting the immunotherapy or chemotherapy to make sure the surgical wound has adequately healed. Some people advocate the use of curatage first, followed by chemotherapy. These experimental procedures are not standard care. Bismodigib and sinitigib are drugs approved for specially treating BCC, but are expensive and cannot be used in pregnant women. Itraconazole, traditionally an antifungal medication, 
has also garnered recent attention for its potential use in the treatment of BCC, especially those that cannot be removed surgically. Possessing anti-hedgehog pathway activity, there is clinical evidence that itraconazole has some efficacy either alone or when combined with vismotigib sinitigib for primary and recurrent BCC. There is one case report of efficacy in metastatic BCC. Immunotherapy. This technique uses your body's immune system to kill cancer cells. Improvement of the immune system works its way out up to the cancerous cells and treat the skin cancer. Topical treatment with 5% amiquamod cream. Short term is IMQ, with 5 applications per week for 6 weeks has a reported 70-90% to success rate at reducing, even removing, the basal cell carcinoma. Amiquamod has received FDA approval, and topical IMQ is approved by the European Medicines Agency for treatment of small superficial basal cell carcinoma. Radiation. Radiation therapy can be delivered either as external beam radiotherapy or as BRA therapy. Although radiotherapy is generally used in older patients who are not candidates for surgery, it is also used in cases where surgical excision will be disfiguring or difficult to reconstruct. Radiation treatment with external radiation often takes as few as 5 visits to as many as 25 visits. Usually, the more visits scheduled for therapy, the less complication or damage is done to the normal tissue supporting the tumor. Radiotherapy can also be useful if surgical excision has been done incompletely or if the pathology report following surgery suggests a high risk of recurrence, for example if nerve involvement has been demonstrated. Cure rate can be as high as 95% for small tumor, or as low as 80% for large tumors. A variation of an external BRA therapy is the epidermal radioisotope therapy. It is used in accordance to the general indications for BRA therapy and especially complex localizations or structures, for example earlobe as well as the genitals. Usually, recurrent tumors after radiation are treated with surgery, and not with radiation. Further radiation treatment will further damage normal tissue, and the tumor might be resistant to further radiation. Radiation therapy may be contraindicated for treatment of navoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Photodynamic therapy. Photodynamic therapy is a new modality for treatment of basal cell carcinoma, which is administrated by application of photosensitizers to the target area. When these molecules are activated by light, they become toxic, therefore destroy the target cells. Methylaminol vulinate is approved by EU as a photosensitizer since 2001. This therapy is also used in other skin cancer types. Thank you for listening Dr. Izzy's medical podcast series. If you want to support this project please subscribe the channel and like this video. Thank you.